Welcome back to Belshi and Rule at the top of Donald Trump's agenda right now overhauling health care. We talked earlier about Democrats taking to the Senate floor last night to protest Senate Republicans crafting their bill in secret. That's exactly what Republicans accused Democrats of doing when they crafted Obamacare. Although, I remind people, there was over a year of consultation on Obamacare. Uh, back then, Governor Mike Pence tweeted, it is simply wrong for legislation that will affect 100% of the American people to be negotiated behind closed doors. And current Senate Republican Whip John Cornyn tweeted, the people have a right to know what is happening behind closed doors with secret HC negotiations. Right, so the it is a little bit weird, right? They're talking about having a bill written by the end of this week, uh, having it scored early next week, and maybe be voting on it by the end of next week before the July 4th uh, holiday. Uh, I, it almost seems like they want a bill that's not going to pass or they want to be able to just put it behind them quickly and move on. Well, it's extraordinary. Just think about President Trump was so proud, was thrilled when they got it through the House. They had the beer party in the Rose Gordon. And then lo and behold, he has since called it mean. And right. I got Chuck Schumer standing on the Senate floor holding a mean sign. Lives are at stake. Yeah. We're going to talk about this with someone who's actually a decision maker in this, Senator Ron Wyden of the state of Oregon, who is among the Democrats who took to the Senate floor last night in protest. He is a member of the Senate Intelligence Budget and Finance Committees, also the Joint Committee on Taxation. Senator, walk us through where you are in terms of health care. Last night was important. Your message certainly got out there. But what can you really do? First of all, I want to give people an update with the latest news. What we learned this morning is that Senate Republicans will meet in secret probably tomorrow to discuss the legislation. And I just don't see what the reason is for not bringing the American people into the discussion right then. There's no reason to keep them in the dark about a bill that is going to cause so much harm to so many Americans. So, Senator, at some point, a bill has to show up. It has to get scored by this uh, CBO, and then you have to you're, vote you're on being, it. You're being logical. I'm sure that what they're talking about would perhaps be done at the last possible moment because they know that if this bill goes through the traditional process, of making sure that people can actually see a text, that it's online for the American people to comment on. They know that Americans are gonna speak out very, very loudly that they don't believe in what this bill does. I mean, the idea that you would have an age tax, that people between 55 and 65, pre-Medicare, would pay five times as much as young people means that their premiums would just go into the stratosphere. The reason that the Senate Republicans are using this approach is because they know it can't stand scrutiny in the light of day. Then what are they telling you in the hallway? You know, last week was sort of this extraordinary moment, a call for unity and bipartisanship. And we heard from so many uh, member, uh, so many lawmakers who said, we got to find a way to work together. Now, here you are less than a week later. These conversations are being had in secret. What are your fellow, what are Republicans saying to you as you're passing them in the hall? They're not saying a whole lot. And the reality is they know that this uh, debate is so different than the debate about the Affor Affordable Care Act. I'm the ranking Democrat on the Senate Finance Committee. We're in charge of oversight over hundreds of billions of dollars for Medicare and Medicaid and tax credits. With respect to the Affordable Care Act, in our committee, the Finance Committee, more than 20 Republican amendments were accepted in that particular debate. There aren't going to be uh, any Democratic uh, amendments this time. And the Republicans know this. The moderates, for example, in uh, the Senate Republican caucus say that they care about Medicaid. Well, I've worked with them on a bipartisan a basis on health care in the so past. Let me ask you I this, sure Senator. I sure hope they haven't changed their minds. Let me ask you about the tweets that we were just uh, reading. We, we saw one, for, this is from 2010, from Mike Pence. Uh, Tom Price had tweeted at the time. Uh, your, your colleague uh, Cornyn from Texas had tweeted at the time. They were all saying, you can't do this behind closed doors. What were they accusing Democrats of doing? Why were they accusing Democrats of having this discussion about the, the Affordable Care Act behind closed doors? 
obviously they were trying to score points back in 2009 because they know, for example, they didn't have much of a case on the merits. I mean, the big thing that was done in 2009 and 10 with the Affordable Care Act is we made sure that American health care would never again be for the healthy and wealthy. We provided airtight, loophole-free protection so that people who had a pre-existing condition could not be discriminated against. So back in 2009, 2010, the Republicans didn't have much of a case, so they tried to say that Democrats were doing everything in secret. The record shows something else. We spent scores and scores of hours then, and walk-through sessions. We've had none of that this time. Then if Republicans let you in the room, more than going through what their plan is and how it doesn't work. Do you have a game plan? Do you have suggestions, a way to take Obamacare and improve it? We've said from the very beginning that if they would move away from this partisan, our way or the highway approach, we have a number of suggestions to work in a bipartisan way. And I have a long history of doing that. The first thing we do is take steps to improve the exchanges, to stabilize the private insurance market. The second thing we would do is focus on prescription uh, drug costs. Uh, I've been particularly concerned about the middlemen, these pharmaceutical benefit managers. We don't know what they're putting in their pocket, what they're putting in the consumer's pocket. And then the reality is, and I was director of the Great Panthers, a senior citizens group for almost seven years, Medicare is very different today. We've got to update the Medicare guarantee and address chronic illness, diabetes, and heart disease, and strokes. That's where 90% of the Medicare dollar is going. We focus in those three areas. Senator, by the way, you're talking to two people who really like talking about pharmacy benefit managers. We, we've been studying that, so thank you for bringing that up. But we want to Good. talk also, uh, you know, you have, as we mentioned earlier, you're on the Intel Committee. Uh, Sheldon Whitehouse said earlier, and it's just a theory, uh, but based on what he sees Mike Flynn doing as it relates to the Russia investigation, he seems to think that Mike Flynn's, Mike Flynn's silence is because he may have flipped and be working with the FBI. Do you, is there any truth to that? I can't, uh, I can't comment on, uh, on deliberations that go on inside uh, the Intelligence Committee. We have a little bit of an update uh, there just for this morning. I uh, lifted my hold just a little bit ago on a key appointment that we need to ensure that we can have an expedited effort to follow the money. So much of our intel investigation relates to following up on the press reports, yours and, and others, about connections between the Russians and various people in the Trump orbit that deal with uh, money. So there's a little bit of an update here in the last hour on that, too. Also, just before we go, there, there was some confusion. Devin Nunes. Has he or has he not recused himself? Because there was a report, he did a radio interview where he said he hadn't he recused hadn't. himself. That, that was just it, was, press it, stuff. It, was just, it was just noise from the press. I certainly have followed this. This deals with the other part of the Congress, the House, rather than, uh, than, than the Senate. I, I think, based on the press reports, it sort of sounds like Mr. Nunes wants to have it both ways. He says he's recusing himself, and then he's trying to figure out a way to stay involved. But I have enormous respect and know him very well as Congressman Schiff, the, Schiff, the uh, ranking Democrat there. You probably uh, get the latest update from him. Right. So uh, I guess it's fair to say our observations are uh, more is getting done on the Senate intel side than the House intel side, or at least that's what you, you seem to be working in a more uh, bipartisan fashion on the Senate intel committee than the House is. I, I think we always strive to work in a bipartisan way. I just had another session uh, with Senator Warner, the, the vice, vice chair. Look, we have spirited differences of opinion. There's no differences of opinion. There's no a secret about that. But we understand that we have an incredibly important job. It's different than Bob Mueller's. Bob Mueller is focusing on the criminal side. It's our job to be able to explain to the American people how our democracy was hacked and do it in a way that protects sources uh, and methods. And that means we've got to try to find some common ground. And are your Republican colleagues doing that with you? We certainly made uh, uh, some headway here recently. When the uh, agreement between Chairman Burr and Senator Warner was put together, I insisted on open hearings, subpoena uh, power, the ability to de declassify. We've got a ways to go, but I think we've also made some progress. Senator, good to talk to you. Thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. Senator Watt.